This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video to show you how to lay out a plate cam based on the performance that you'd like to get from it. Um, this is what the entire uh, layout would look like, including at the top a displacement diagram, then the drawing of the cam itself. This is a plate cam. That's the face of the cam. This is the cam from the side showing the hub projection. This is the displacement table. The process for doing this involves uh, multiple steps. The first thing you need to do is to generate a displacement diagram because the displacement diagram is how you determine the distance from the base circle out to the face of the cam at any given location on the rotation. So if you take a look along the bottom here, you have 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, and that takes and divides a circle into 360 degrees in 15 degree increments. So you have to start with the description of what you want done. In this particular case, we have a follower. That follower is something circular that turns. It's got a diameter of 0.5. It's going to ride on the face of the cam. And in this case, this cam is, is turning counterclockwise. So as the cam turns with this off-center hole, that follower is going to be pushed by the face of the cam up. And it's going to go up for a while. Then it's going to sit in one spot for a time. Then it's going to come back down. Then it's going to sit in one spot for a time as well. Let's start by determining the center distance from the center of the cam to the center of the follower. That distance becomes the prime circle. In this case, the prime circle has a diameter of 3. Uh, these dimensions are the key seat dimensions, so we're not going to deal with those as far as the cam uh, layout goes. But of course, they'd have to be in the drawing itself. So we start with that prime circle. And that prime circle then dictates the overall length of the displacement diagram, which is 9.420, which is to three decimal places the circumference of the prime circle, or pi times 3. Once you've got the overall length of this displacement diagram, you then have to have the overall height. How much are you expecting that follower to rise from its rest position or its base position when it goes through this um, cam sequence? And the total distance we're going to expect it to rise is one and a half inches. So we end up with something that is one and a half inches tall. So the maximum distance from the base circle that the follower will be is from here to here, which is one and a half inches. Now there are different kinds of movements for cams. Cams can move suddenly, they can move more gradually, they can speed up, they can slow down. In order to determine the uh, type of movement you want, you have to actually analyze the behavior of the cam to determine how quickly it needs to be in one place, something, some uh, behaviors that you need to avoid something called jerk characteristics, how suddenly a cam changes direction. In this particular case, what we're going to do is to have the cam rise for one and a half inches in what's called harmonic motion, where it kind of eases in, speeds up, eases out, and then once it gets to a certain spot, it's going to just sit there for a while in what's called a dwell. That means that the follower will not be moving up or down as the cam turns. It'll be sitting in one place. Then we're going to have it drop back to its original spot, which we could do very suddenly with what's called uniform motion. Or we can do something called modified uniform motion that, again, kind of eases it into that drop, goes a little faster as it goes down through, and then eases out of the drop when it gets to the other end to reduce the extent to which it's going to jerk. Modified uniform motion just requires that you add a tangent arc to the uniform line. The uniform motion line in this case is that hidden line. And the uh, radius of that arc ranges from anywhere from one-third to the entire rise. So that arc can, right there can have a radius of 0.5, can have a radius of 1, it can have a radius of 1.5, which is a total rise. That center mark right there represents one-third of the radius of the 0.5 center. Comes back here to um, 330 and then for 30 degrees, 30 degrees of rotation, we have another dwell and that dwell is at zero so the follower just sits still. Now in order to lay this out, you need to divide the overall displacement diagram line into increments that match the increments on this harmonic displacement diagram over here. So I use 15 degree increments here, so the distance from here to here represents 15 degrees 15 degrees of a 360 degree full rotation. Then over here for 180 degrees, which is half a circle, we lay out a circle. 
have a, a radial line that comes down at 15 degrees and then a series of other radial lines at 15 degrees and they actually dictate the height of the displacement diagram for any given increment. So at 15 degrees is a very, very small rise. At 30 degrees is a larger rise and the rise is getting larger as it goes through and it gets larger faster as it goes through until it starts to slow down. And that's the notion of harmonic movement. When you're done with your displacement diagram, you can use those values to create these segments right here, again, at 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and those segments then become the end points for the distance from the base circle, and the base circle is just the circle that the follower is resting on, the distance from the base circle out to the face of the cam. They have to be distributed uniformly at a 15 degree increment. And when all of that is done, you create a displacement table where you actually indicate the specific rise or fall um, of the follower at every instance of a degree of a uh, increment. So at 180 degrees, it's going to rise 1.5. At 195 degrees, it'll be at 1.5. At 210 degrees, it'll be at 1.5. And at 225, 15 degrees later, it will have dropped to 1.3598. So I'm going to flip to another AutoCAD drawing here. I'm using AutoCAD, by the way, instead of SolidWorks because SolidWorks is just not well suited for this kind of displacement diagram, which is really more of a two-dimensional um, exercise. So if we're looking right here, we have a three-inch prime circle. I'm just going to draw a line in AutoCAD. I'm going to draw that line any distance. Go to my parametric tools. and Under the parametric tools, I'm going to use a linear dimension so I put the dimension from here to here, and the reason I want to use this tool is because now I can say make that dimension equal to pi times 3, brings it out for me to that distance. I'm just going to delete that parametric dimension right now, move this line and bring it over here. Now I need to do a couple of things. First I need to divide this up into, into increments. So I'm going to use the divide command for that, take the line itself. And because I'm using 15 degrees, and I can take 15 to the 360 24 times, I'm going to indicate I want 24 segments. I've set this, the uh, point display mode equal to these little X's, so now that indicates where each one of those lines is going to take place. It's important to know what the numbers are, so I've actually got a program I wrote that'll help me put those in. I'm going to do that by pausing the video and then coming back. So while I was um, paused, I just went and put the numbers in, starting at 0 and then 15 degrees, 30 degrees, etc. Now I need to draw a circle over here, and I'm going to draw a circle using two points. So I'm really drawing the diameter. I'm going to say starting right here and then going straight up, go 1.5. 1.5 represents the total rise I want for my displacement diagram. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in a line, and that line is going to start at the center of the circle go to the top. I'm just going to do an array of that and the array is going to be a polar array. I'll go around the center of the circle and I need 13 of these lines to fill in 180 degrees so that I have that. I'm going to just trim that out. Now what I'm doing here is to create a series of points that get go up faster as you go um, vertically. The distance increases as you go vertically. And now I need to just draw a series of lines that go from my nodes here till they line right up with the endpoints of this and that's how a harmonic displacement diagram is generated. I'll just do a couple of these um, here and then I'll change to uh, my um, pause of the video so I can make this work a little bit better. First thing I'm going to do is to go into uh, object snap and set node as one of my object snaps. So now I'm going to say from here I'm just going to hang it right there I'm going to draw a little line segment that goes from here and then stops right there. I'll draw another little line segment that goes from here and stops right there. Another that goes here, stops up here. So I'm just using each of these radial segments to generate a line segment of a different height. I'm just going to go through the whole thing, but I'm doing that offline just so that it doesn't take so long. So I've drawn each of these lines so they line right up with the um, lines coming across from the side. And sometimes on these displacement diagrams you'll see people actually draw the lines in so there's no question of where they're going. 
I don't feel that we need to do that. That one went to the wrong place. So I'll just delete it. So the first one would have been the line that went from here to here. The next one would be the line that went from here to here, etc. But I'm just, I'm just going to leave those off for right now. Now I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to draw a line that goes from here. And this one's going to go over 30 degrees because there's a 30 degree dwell. So I know the top of my displacement diagram should just be flat right there. And now I'm going to generate the harmonic, I'm not the harmonic, I'm sorry, the uniform motion. It's going to be modified uniform. If we look at the other drawing we just had up. That's the result of taking and creating, this is usually shown as a hidden line, but a straight line that goes from where you're starting a uniform motion to where it's ending, and then you modify it by adding a little arc in there. I'll show you how that would be done. So what I'm doing, let me just make sure I know, two, okay. So we're going from that point right there, right down to 330. I'm going to take that, I'm going to drop it on a layer that has a hidden line type, just so that you can see that it's the uh, original. So what we have to do right now is to draw an arc, and that arc is going to be drawn so that it is 0 0.5, 1 point, uh, 0 0.51 or 1.5. So let's go with 1 down here then goes up to there. Now what that means is I've got a radius on this that goes right up to that tangency and the length of that in this case is two-thirds of the total rise. I use two-thirds instead of one-third so you can see it a little bit better. Now I need to do the same thing on this. So I need that circle right there to have a center that goes here. Oop, not there. going to move that down so that it actually touches here. So with both of those things touching, what we do is we've generated a, an arc that we can use to create a tangency. So if I draw a line that is tangent to this arc and tangent to this arc, and then I use that arc as the transition point, I can now trim this off between here and here. So now we've got a little bit of an arc right here, a little bit of an arc right, go back and trim that again, a little bit of an arc right here, and that represents the transition from one location to another location. We're going to leave that in there as our normal uniform motion, and the modification is that radius right there. And then when we're done, we're going to have a straight shot right here, and that straight shot right there, which I'll draw in as an extra line, represents a dwell because the follower isn't going up and it isn't going down. Now to create the rest of this, we can do that one of two ways, either with a spline, where we start at zero, and then just go through the end point of each one of these, which is what I'm going to do here. We could have used a P line and then spline fit it afterward. When this is all done, put the things together, this one goes right to there. Put the whole thing together and we now have a displacement diagram. Now we need the rest of the lines that go from here up and the rest of those lines would be generated by drawing them from each of those increments until they intercept our displacement diagram. And that represents the distance the cam face is away at any given location. So you have to go to the black line in this case not to the green dash line. Once you've got all of those, those line lengths, each one of those line lengths, whoops, something happened over here that's not good and I can see what it is. I skipped something. Yeah, that one is correct. That one is correct. That one is not correct. This should have been going to here. So what I need is to take that spline and move this up to that, move this up to here. Uh, and you can see it's a lot smoother. So this whole thing starting from here up through is our displacement diagram. And again, the length of each one of those lines is going to be applied down here. So that line segment right there is the same length as this line segment right here. That line segment right there, same length as that line segment right there. 
So now, in order to finish it, what you have to do is to lay out these lines so that they radiate around and then go and change the length of each one to the appropriate length based on the uh, displacement diagram. When you're all done, you measure each line, add that length into the table where each of these dimensions, uh, each of these angles is placed, finish up the rest of your drawing, put in the hub, and now you've got a drawing of a cam, displacement diagram, and a displacement table.